Hi, in this video, I'm going to teach you how to perform hypothesis testing on two population means with paired or related samples. To easily spot a problem on paired or related samples, usually these are with before and after scenarios. For example, you are or there is a program implemented, say, on diet, exercise, or marketing strategy, or a teaching method in which you will compare the values before the implementation of program and then another set of values after implementing the program. For instance, if you um, have samples undergo a certain diet program, you record the weights of the people before the program then they undergo for a certain period of time to the diet um, and then you check again after that the values or the weight of the people then you can compare so that's an example of a paired or related sample so that is similar to say exercise for marketing strategy it could mean um, you test first whether there is an, or you want to test whether there is an effect of a certain strategy if the sales will go up. So initially, you will have a data on what um, is the sales, the values for the sales, and then you apply a marketing strategy, and then you check again the sales if there is an improvement. Another case would be that on uh, based on pairing criterion, so your data is involving values from related samples. And for example, if you are checking if there's a significant difference between the salary of a husband and his wife, so you will have two sets of data, but you know that these values are coming from related samples because the husband is related to his wife. And also you can have values taken from persons with the same weights or the same grades or the same number of years of experience. So these are uh, related in a way that they, they are coming from uh, people who have the same values. Okay. To understand how it is really done, let's get one example. And this is on a diet program. So as we can see, so let's read the problem first. Suppose a study was conducted to determine the effect of a certain diet program on weight. The data below that you see here are the weights in kilograms of 10 persons who were on a standard diet. So basically, uh, they, there, there's no program. They, they just eat um, what we call the standard uh, diet. And then they were asked to undergo a program for one month. So our expectations here is that there will be some changes, but we will see whether there is really a significant difference or, or whether the weights of these people will um, generally go down. And if, if that is the case, that means the diet program is effective. But remember that just by looking at the values, if they are generally going down, it's not sufficient to say that the program is really effective. So we have to perform a hypothesis testing, and that is our um, hypothesis is that the diet program is effective. So weights were recorded before and after the one-month program, and we can see here the values for the weights before the program, so you can see the numbers. Then person, that means person 1, person 2, up to person 10. And we also have recorded the weights of these same people. So we have a, an example of um, related samples so because they are coming from the same set of people. Then we have the numbers after. So we have the 68, 65, and so on until 69. So let us formally state what we want to do here. So determine if the diet program is effective in reducing weight. There will be an assumption that the difference in the weight before and after undergoing the program for one month follow a normal distribution. This is important because we need 
uh, that assumption. Otherwise, um, we cannot perform the testing. The level of significance required or that we'll be used in this hypothesis test is 1%. In this test, the formula that we will use for the test statistic is T is equal to D bar minus mu D all over S D over the square root of N. So D bar is the mean difference or the average of the differences, the mean of the difference or differences. Mu D is the hypothesized difference. Usually this is zero because we will be hypothesizing that um, there is no difference. So mu D is common D zero. And then SD, so as you can see SD, S is the sample standard deviation, standard deviation of the differences. And then N is the sample size. So why are we using T? Remember, we use T instead of Z when the population standard deviation is unknown. So basically, we don't have any information about the population standard deviation or the variance. And also, the sample size is just 10. Okay. Take note that when we count the sample size, because this is a paired samples, we count it in pairs. So pair number 1, pair number 2, 3, 4, and so on, up to 10. So we only have 10 uh, samples, so the sample size is 10. So let's start now with the hypothesis testing. So for this test, the approach that I use is the five-step approach. So let's start with number one, step number one. We have to assign uh, some values. Let's say the mu before is the average weight before the program and the mu after is the average weight after the program. So with that, we can set our null hypothesis to be mu before is equal to the mu after. That means there is really no effect when you undergo the program. And then the alternative hypothesis is that the mu before must be greater than the mu after if we want to claim that the program is effective because we want to see if it really reduces the weight. So the mean average uh, or the, the average weight before should be higher than the average after the program. And then we go to step number two. Step number two is where we list the information that we need to, co to compute for the test statistic. And if we recall, so the one I wrote earlier, the T is given by T bar minus mu D all over the ST over the square root of N. So you need all the information from the formula. So you need to know what is D bar, the mu D, the S D, and the N. And together with this, you have to list down the significance level indicated in the problem. And it says we have to use 1% as level of significance. So that means our alpha is 0 0.01. So to compute for the D bar, the mu D, 
SD and the N. The D bar is basically the difference or the average of the difference of the weights. The mu D will be zero because we are assuming that the mean before is equal to the mean after. And basically, the mu after minus mu before is our mu d. So if they are the same or equal, then the difference is equal to 0. st, so we will be computing this value later on, the standard deviation of the differences. And the sample size is 10. Okay. So where are we getting the D and the, the D bar and the S D? So we will be using the data that we have. The D is basically so you have to add another row. The D is the difference of the of each pair. So for example, seventy two down to sixty eight. So seventy two minus sixty eight is four. Sixty seven down to sixty five, that's two. This is 1, this is negative 2, so if the number is negative, you have to write it as negative. 74 minus 72 is 2, 71 minus 66 is 5, this is 4, this is 1, this is 3, and finally we have 3. So the D bar is the average of these numbers, the, the average of the differences. So we will calculate this using our calculator together with the SD, which is basically the standard deviation of these numbers. Using our calculator, the values are 2.3 for the mean of the differences and the SD is 2.0028. Okay, so this came from 2.00277, so I'm using four decimal places. Okay, so let's complete the information 2.3 and 2.0028. So now we go to step number three. In step number three, this is where we calculate the exact value of the t. So again, we have d bar minus mu d all over s d over the square root of n. So d bar again is 2.3 minus 0. That's our hypothesized difference, the mu d. s d is 2.3. 0, 0, 0.0028 divided by the square root of 10. So again, we use a calculator to compute for the exact value. And based on my calculation, the value is 3.63. Okay, or it came from 3.6315. Okay, so you can use this or the 3.6315. So now, so take note of this number because we'll be using that to compare with the t um, value from the t table. So we have step number four. We create a diagram. And this will be um, one tailed and the region is the critical region or the rejection region is on the right. And again, how do we know? Because H1 says mu before is greater than mu after so greater than in the alternative hypothesis means the area of rejection is on the right now with the area of rejection we need to identify the critical value so the critical value is the t of alpha so we're not taking the half of alpha because the alpha is concentrated on one side so it's basically t of 0 0.01 with a degree of freedom equal to, okay, so the degree of freedom we use here is n minus 1. 
So the degree of freedom is 10 minus 1, which is equal to 9. So from this, we refer to our t table. So we look at the t of 0 0.01 column. The t of 0 0.01 column is here. And then we go down to 9. So the number that we need is 2.8214. So the critical value is 2.8214 or 2.821. So from here, we get the computed test statistic. And that is what we have obtained in step number 3. So we bring this in our diagram, and since the critical value is 2.8124, 3.63 is higher than that, so it will fall somewhere here. That means it will be under the critical region. So if it is under the critical region or the area of rejection, our conclusion must be to reject our null hypothesis because there is sufficient evidence so evidence supporting that there is really a decrease in the weight supporting our H1 that mu before is actually higher than the mu after that means their weights were or are reduced okay so that's how you perform a test of hypothesis when you're given paired or related samples it's again i always say this in all my videos on hypothesis testing that the process is the same for all the testing except that you will just change your formulas depending on the types of samples or information that you have so the recognition of the type of um, samples will really determine the formulas that you will be using in the hypothesis testing so as you can see we have step number one the setting of the null and alternative hypothesis the number two is where you write some important information sometimes you need to calculate them number three is where you compute the test statistic value so let's just note this based on its name test statistic value statistic statistic value and the number four is the creation of the diagram and also this is where you see the critical value the boundary that will set whether your test statistic value is in the area of rejection or not and then based on the location of the test statistic value you will either say reject or fail to reject and here we have rejected HO because 3.63 is higher than 2.8214 that means there is sufficient evidence supporting our H1. And, well, to say it formally, it means the diet program is effective. Is effective. Okay, so I hope you were able to understand or you know now how to uh, perform hypothesis testing when you are given paired or related samples.